Tonight, we're looking at a series within a series regarding the Y series. We're looking, and we have been looking at sex and sexuality. And tonight, we're looking at this painful but hopeful, believe it or not, topic. We're looking at the difference between natural and unnatural attraction. And I want you to mark it down this way. Before we go any further tonight, I want all of you to be strong. You may be here tonight, and you were invited here by a friend, and you can't, you can't even get past the subtitle. You, I, you need to be strong tonight for yourself. You need to be strong tonight for the people that you know around you. Don't be offended at truth, and I will speak as tenderly as, and as kind as I can. It's not that I'm not going to be kind or tender. It's just that in my passion for the Bible, I can be misunderstood because I can get excited and my voice will be then go elevated and you might read that the wrong way. And yet, please understand that if that happens, it's because I so know the power of God's word to heal me, heal you, that it gets me all pumped up. So don't misread me tonight. Why sex and sexuality? And we're looking at the difference between natural. Mark that word. There's no other way to put it. Natural and unnatural attraction. We're going to talk about both in these next couple of weeks. We need to talk about both in these next couple of weeks. You know this verse well. We've been using it for a while. Please look again. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to 25, it's the Bible. If you don't know, friend, if you're here visiting or if you're watching, this is the Bible written by God. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man, that's Adam, should be alone. I will make him a helper, that's Eve, comparable or comparable to him. We could say complementary to one another. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And when, whenever Adam, whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to all the birds. Man, that's amazing. How long did that take? <laughs> to every beast of the field, every one of them. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable or complementary. To him, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he, that's God, took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. You know, God could have snapped his finger and Eve would have just been standing there or laying there. Isn't it amazing to me that God pulls the first woman who would bear the first child, that from that child would come every human being to those that are sitting here tonight. The first woman came out of a man. It's only happened once and it's not going to happen again. <laughs> you, you, you saw the news, huh? Okay. God closed up the flesh in its place and then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman. That's Eve. And he brought her to the man and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Father, I pray that you'd bless this brief time that we have together. May I not fall into the temptation of trying to get something done and served up prematurely like a bad meal. Father, take this night. And while we're at it, please heal our land. And Lord, comfort those who lost their loved ones, family, on this 9-11. I thank you, God, that we still live in a nation that when crisis comes, we turn to you. May we never lose the spirit of running to you. And may some of us even tonight run to you. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. So friends, listen, church, uh, it's critical that we... Uh, 
just, just be mature enough intellectually, emotionally enough to know that just a casual read of the Bible will bring you to the understanding that God takes gender very, very seriously. It's the God of the Bible, as you read a moment ago, that creates male and female. He creates them to be husbands and wives, and he, he creates them to be reproductive in their sex, in produ- reproductive in their love, reproductive in their culture, in their society. That is called natural. It's normal. It is scientifically a reproducible fact. Just so you know, science is em- emotionless. Science knows no emotions. Science is not swayed by opinion. Chemistry and biology, human physiology, anthropology is pure science. Those disciplines have no ears. They can't hear. They only move in the realm of facts. God takes this topic very seriously. And so tonight I want to attempt to challenge the runaway narrative of our day in which you and I live in. I I need you to think now. We're going to start with a big explosion. I need all of you. Are you thinking? Raise your hands, please. I need to know. (laughs) Okay. I want to ask you a question. Think before you speak, lest you be found to to be a fool. (laughs) Think. In the realm of science, let's not even talk about theology. Let's not even talk about Bible. In the realm of science, I want you to scientifically explain to me, and by doing so, you're going to validate. Explain to me, so thus validate the word homosexual or homosexuality. I want to hear a scientific description. I want to hear a scientific definition about that word. Sexuality, sexuality, homo, same, same sexuality, passion for the same sexuality, not just passion for the same sex, sexuality, but acting upon it physically. I, I'm asking you tonight to think maybe you've never thought about this in your life. If you're a pure, pure scientist tonight, what would be the definition in a scientific notebook in a scientific document proving the existence of homosexuality. I've asked the question twice. Let me give you an example. The Bible says here a moment ago that Adam gave names to the cattle, to the beast of the field. Can you take, can you take an ox and dissect that ox and can you come to the conclusion with all of its parts laid out that this is, this is the spleen of an ox. This is the tongue of an ox. This is the lungs of an ox. The answer to that is absolutely yes. Can you, can you, take the, can you get the DNA of an ox and look at it? Yes. Can you do that same thing If you stumble across a a war zone, oh my goodness, if you stumble across the Bahamas tonight, a land that is now gone, as they are trying to find more dead in the Bahamas, and you come across something that resembles a human being, If you begin to analyze it scientifically, you can actually find scientifically that you have come upon uh, an approximate 30 to 33-year-old female, uh, Caucasian in descent, even though the the body is completely skinned from the hurricane in the debris. But we can scientifically conclude we're looking at a 30 to 33-year-old white female, no arms, heads gone, but we've been, we, we can make that determination. How do you do that? How does forensics do that? How does, how does the coroner's office, how do they do that? They do that by 
documented scientific research. Listen, I'm going somewhere, and I know we won't get finished tonight, but you've got you to think this thing through because of hope. You need hope tonight. You can gather the data, and in this wonderful age that you and I live in, even if you had one drop of that individual's blood, now we live in a world where you can, recon we, you can reconstruct that person in a computer. Happens every day, a thousand times a day in this country. What am I describing to you? I'm describing to you forensic science, research, biology, chemistry, facts. John Adams said facts are stubborn things. It's a great word. You say, why are you bringing this up? Because right now, in this universe of ours, I can find the remains of an individual, not knowing what gender, not knowing what, what ethnicity, I can take that, what's left of that body, and I can take that into a laboratory, and I can tell you this is a male of approximately 42 years of age. I can tell you that. I can't tell you if that male's a Christian or a non-Christian. I cannot tell you if that male was a Republican or a Democrat. I can't tell you anything about that person based on choices. There's nothing in the scientific data that tells me about their choices. You do not have, and no one has, a definition, a scientific definition of homosexual because it doesn't exist. Go look and see after the study tonight. You can't find it. Oh, you'll find people making stuff up. But you will not have a physician at a, or a coroner at a, at a scene and say, what we're looking at here is a, the data, the analysis. We have a 38-year-old male, a Caucasian, um, homosexual, um, a, no, don't laugh. Because that's one of the lines that Satan has sold people. Well, I was born this way. When people tell you that, don't get upset with them. They're trying to find justification for their place in the world. They know it's wrong. They, they, they know. Remember Cy Rogers who spoke here? A man who was three weeks away from a sex change who had gone through 14 months of hormone replacement therapy at Johns Hopkins University and Jesus got a hold of him three weeks before and Cy Rogers stood in this pulpit and said every homosexual he knew and knows they know that their lifestyle is killing them and that it's wrong they know it but the narrative out there is so loud and there's so much arguing and nastiness flying about that the truth is the first victim, I think. And the emotions get so tense that people don't know what to do. And so it's, it becomes a big yelling match and, a, and it becomes really a big, ugly thing. And before we go at all any further into this, the, the whole question is for us is to define what is natural and what is unnatural. And if we were to pause long enough, you, would, you, my friend, you here today, tonight, you would actually come to an intellectual conclusion, what is natural, what is unnatural. You see, it's when our emotions get involved in the narrative that everything gets messed up. Because you cannot support homosexuality biblically there are those who say, and there are, look at my fingers, Christians who say they can. And some of those Christians today are some of the most dangerous deceivers in our world. They're seminary graduates, they're pastors, they've written books, they're experts, and they're this and they're that. They are wolves in sheep's clothing, and Jesus warned us about them 2,000 years ago. <laughs> so don't get duped by that stuff, just know something. 
that our God is a God of loving, perfect, excellent order. Now, I am not denying that there are those, listen to me now, verbiage is extremely important. There are those who practice homosexuality. There are those who do that. The Bible says it's a sin. The Bible condemns its activity because the Bible says it is destructive against nature. It destroys your body and it ruins your psyche and it ravages your soul. I have all the scriptures here to back that up. You'll have to come back next time for us to get deeper into this. I just want you to know I understand that this is a topic where either A, no church will talk about it, or B, they'll talk wrong about it. I watched today a clip on CNN of what might be the most famous pastor in the world. When that CNN reporter asked him, is homosexuality a sin? His answer was, it could be. My dear friends, listen. Adultery, is it a sin or is it not a sin? It's a sin. Adultery is a sin. Lying is a sin. Okay? You can't soft pedal any of these things. If you soft pedal lying, if you don't bring the truth to a liar, you're condemning them. Listen, we're agents of truth. Are we flawed creatures? Yes. But do we have God's eternal truth? Yes. We are like, we are like medics in a war zone. We're running to those that are wounded and hurting all the while. We too can be shot at any time. <laughs> but we're bringing something that's life-given. We're not running to them to give them us. We're running to them to give them him. Big difference, okay? And so, technically, scientifically, homosexuality as a fact, as a defined fact, and as a True existence is not possible. Homosexuality does not exist. Practicing the act of homosexuality exists. Are you letting that set in? To say that it exists on the grounds of science would have to be that you admit to the scientific veracity of it, that there's evidence for it. Guys, can you put up one of the, uh, it's a clump of four clips, the first one. No gay gene, massive study, homes in on genetic basis of human sexuality. Nearly a half a million genomes reveal five DNA markers associated with sexual behavior. But, non, but none with the power to predict the sexuality of an individual. That's an absolute fact. Uh, next slide. There's no evidence. This is a, I think this is London. I'm not sure what news source this is. There's no evidence that a single gay gene exists. This is August 30th, 2019. Updated. Next one. Next slide. Massive study finds no single genetic cause of same-sex sexual behavior. Analysts of a half a million people suggest genetics may have a limited contribution to sexual orientation. May. See the word may? They put that in there to soften it. Yeah, these guys are spectacular. You can always count on the New York Times to to make something up, which is what they did today, by the way. Side note. Did you see it on the news? I I I uh, reposted it on my Facebook and Instagram. New York Times. 18 years ago today, airplanes flew in to the World Trade Centers, killing 2,000 people. Airplanes. It was, I thought it was a bunch of crazy people flew them into the building. Oh, and by the way, what an insult. It wasn't 2,000 people died. I think it's, 
Just that building, just those buildings were 2,000, I think, 2,996 or 2,969, I forget. They got, the, they got the number wrong, and airplanes don't fly into buildings. People fly them into buildings. Anyway, that's New York Times. I feel better now. <laughs> so New York Times, they're spectacular. Many, listen, listen carefully now. Many genes influence same-sex sexuality. Not a single gay gene. Do you hear the spin? Anybody want? Anybody? You just saw those three things where scientists have concluded after the largest study ever done that there is no gay gene. We already knew this. President Bill Clinton commissioned a U.S. Army laboratory study in his first year as president. And at the end of that study, the United States Army laboratories concluded there is no gay gene because they thought they were going to find a gay gene. There is no gay gene. So, Jack, what are you saying tonight? I'm, I'm just speaking facts here. I'm just going science on you. There is no DNA precursor. There's no DNA post-mortem found to substantiate homosexuality. If you read these articles, by the way, you'll find out that the scientists conclude that it is probably, listen, everyone, it is probably a factor of, and I quote, their environment. Do you hear me? Yeah. Homo, listen, homosexuality is not a scientific fact. You were not born that way. The events of your life, abuse most often, children sexually abused, or children allowed to view adult sexual interaction, but if it's not physical abuse done to them, the second prevailing explanation for why a child tends or, t or leans toward a confused sexuality is a child seeing pornography. When a child sees pornography, there's a chemical reaction in their brain that will mess up their judgment and their thought process what might be for the rest of their life unless there's healing. I think personally, people who have exposed pornography to children, I don't think, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna say what should be done to them. I just know that God will take care of it when he comes back. Jesus said, you know what? Jesus said it this way, and I'm sure he was controlling himself. He said, for someone who has harmed a little one. It will be better for that person in the day of judgment if they had never been born. Jesus Christ said that. When it's viewed, when it's taken in, it changes. Listen, so many people are confused sexually because they have been tampered with They weren't born that way. They were made that way. They were exposed to things in life that they never should have been exposed to. Today, across America and around the world, it is universal. I believe it's demonic that there are cultures around this globe at this time that children are being prostituted, pimped, and abused, and, and molested universally around this world. And now it's been going on long enough where kids now are growing up and now they're, now they're adults and they're confused and, and they're, they're messed up. They don't know what's what. And it's the, it's, the, it's the atmosphere that we're in. It was biblically predicted. These are a, yet a big indicator of the last days. But we don't wipe our hands and say, well, you know, we're Christians. The Bible said there'd be days like this. It's the last days. Look up, here comes Jesus. Wait a minute. Yeah, look up, here comes Jesus. But in the meantime, before we go up, we need to make sure that these people are given the opportunity to hear the truth and to be, listen, brought out of the prison that they're in. For a Christian and a Christian ministry and a Christian pastor to say, you know, 
You know, it's, God wants us to love our neighbors and the greatest expression is to love one another. That pastor is condemning that person by not getting to the truth, using scripture wrongly because of their own cowardice, never getting to the truth to put their own selves on the line so that person might think and find a beautiful, free, safe life. We kind of do that when we have a loved one that's dying. You know, we are someone that we know, oh my gosh, you know, they're dying. Uh, uh, I, I want, you know, heaven, hell, they don't, they don't believe in Jesus. Oh, Uncle Fred, Uncle Fred, can you hear me? Yes. Uncle Fred, do you believe in God? Yes. Oh, whew, whew, I'm off the hook. You can go ahead and die now. I'm good. No, did you, tell Uncle, did you tell him about the gospel and the cross and sin and the resurrection and the fact that Jesus died and you... Oh, no, I just asked me if you believed in God. Do you hear what I'm saying? If we have homosexual or LBGTQ family members or neighbors or friends, if we were to say to them, uh, do you believe in God? Yeah, sure, of course. Oh, great. Woo, okay, fine. You're condemning them. You need to reach out to them and tell them. Love on them. With the kind of love that's going to rescue them. Not the kind of love that condones them. Nobody would walk up and say, hey, um, how, how's, your, how's your adultery going? Okay, it's going good? Well, listen, as long as you love, then th that's okay. Listen, our culture is preaching to you that homosexuality gets a free pass and that it's okay. Yet homosexuality is one of the leading causes of suicide. But the people who are promoting that lifestyle are saying we're the reason why it's such a high suicidal number because we don't make them feel accepted. And yet... Inside, they, they are broken and they're hurt. Oh. We didn't get to the first point. <laughs> this is such a big deal. This is, this is such a big deal because, listen, I want you to go home. Take this, take this away tonight. There's no scientific evidence for homosexuality. There's only the choice to practice homosexuality. The doing of it. He said, well, Jack, what if someone's tempted in the homosexual uh, temptation? You're tempted. Fight it. Think about it. Are you... Are you is, is anyone tempted to look at, a, look at another man or another woman? What are you supposed to do about that? Fight it. <laughs> I said, man, I'd really like to know what it'd be like to rob a bank <laughs> or do this crazy thing. Uh, excuse me, normal, natural is stop thinking like that. Those are aberrant thoughts. Fight them and get them out. Listen, tem remember, temptation is not a sin. Acting on it is. So I know I offer you nothing tonight because of the shortness of our time together, except I do ask you to take away that challenge. Science cannot define, nor can they find an indicator scientifically for the existence of homosexuality. It's because it's a, a choice made on emotions. And we as a church need to have a cultural shift in our church where dads are dads and strong loving leaders and dads and husbands are strong loving leaders and moms, are, moms and wives are strong loving leaders that, this, that the family is resurrected and the family is renewed so kids can grow up, listen, as stable as possible in this crazy world. The, the, you know, the world's crazy but the kids should be able to come home to a sanctuary. If tonight you're here and homosexuality is part of your life, 
you know you're not happy, you know it's not working, I want you to know that Jesus has such an awesome, better way for you to not only live, his whole message of coming to the world was to forgive us of our sins, but when he forgives us, he doesn't leave us in that condition. When he saves us, he lifts us up out of it and puts us on a whole new path. It's what he did at the cross. It's what he did when he rose from the dead. And so next time together, we didn't even do questions tonight. How horrible. I totally told you guys we're going to do questions and we're going to have a Bible study. But I can tell you what the message is going to be next time. It's right here in front of me. Is unnatural sex okay with God? We're going to be looking at that and what science and the Bible says about that. We're going to be looking at, isn't there any biblical justification for homosexuality? We're going to be looking at that. We're going to be answering the question, wasn't I born this way? And we're going to be, in, this, is, this is one that's very near and dear to my heart. We're going to be looking at the fact that you may be very, very confused about your role. It's just confusion. You can fix confusion. And the final thing we'll see next time is, can I change? Now, hopefully I'll be able to get to this before the state of California uh, in the current conversation in Sacramento today will allow me to address it. It might be legal for me to address it in the coming uh, future. But I want to I wanna leave you with, uh, with this. God knows you, DNA and beyond. If we as scientists can find a speck of skin and analyze it, and recreate you on a computer screen. God knows all the things that happened in your life to get you going down that path of confusion, of, of gender confusion, of, of fearful thoughts and fearful emotions of sexuality. God knows. He knows. He knows better than you know. You think you know. He knows you better than you know you. And just know this from the Bible. He's like this to you. He's saying, okay, now look, just open the door. Open the door. Okay, come. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Do you remember that scene in the original Jurassic Park where they're in the Jeep and the T-Rex is running? And the guy's trying to get in the Jeep, and the guy's going, come on, come on. Come on, come come, 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 I see Jesus like that, going, come on, come on. Come, 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 come. Come to safety. Come to a new world. Come to a new life. Come to being set free. Find new love. Find new friends. Find a whole new way to experience life. He makes you new. He makes you new. I wasn't a homosexual, but he did it for me in a different area. He can do it for you. And can you imagine being set free from your unbridled passions, your unbridled desire, reckless desire? It just controls you. You have to think about it. You get so tired, and it drags you along. It just drags you, you know? It's like, man, if I could just break. At first, it was fun. And then it almost, it was supposed to be so pleasurable and so, so great. And then it became just, um, it's like, what? And then you're trying to do your job or you're trying to work or you're trying to do this thing or that thing and it keeps popping up in your mind. And you realize, oh my gosh, it's all I think about. It's all I can do. It's all I can, it's all I want to go. And it begins to eat you. It could be homosexuality. It could be a, a, a heterosexuality. It could be anything like that. It consume you. And Jesus sets us free from that. 
He's so good, please. So let's pretend, let's pretend. Here, let's just do this. Other than the worship, tonight never happened. You, when you walk out of the building, you will not remember that, <laughs> that this night took place because we didn't even get a chance to get into it. But I stress again, I said something tonight, there's just dead silence in here because you've never thought that thought before, nor have I. The challenge is there is no such thing as homosexuality in the sciences. There's only the act. There's not a science. That should give you hope. The Heavenly Father, tonight, strange night, I know, Father, I just pray at the very least that you would be communicating to the hearts of anyone listening this evening that if we were into throwing stones, that would have been felt tonight, that would have been seen tonight, and that did not happen. But Lord, I do pray that there is the work of your Holy Spirit tonight that no man can mimic, where you reach down in the psyche of a man or a woman, young man, young woman here tonight, and touch them with light and with truth. I pray that you would do that, Lord, powerfully. We have our children in a world here in this nation where they're being told from every angle that they can't know what they are, that because they have this thought, they must be that. They have this thought, they must be this. They got politicians hammering on their head. They got school. They got curriculum. They got music. They got TV, sitcoms, toys, games, commercials. Oh, God in heaven, please. Please, oh, Lord, hear our cry. Jesus, you said that you've come to set us free. I know you've done that. I pray that tonight you would set people free. At the very least, stimulate minds to think. Awaken a spirit within a man or a woman tonight that they might realize I've been living like an animal for my pleasures and my animal desires and they're, they're, I'm getting tired of them. I thought I was using them. Now I realize they're using me. Only you can do that, God. So Lord, bring healing tonight. Healing, Lord, to a body that's been ravaged by aberrant sex, unnatural sex. Their body abused, body wounded. Some because of making the wrong choice. Others having been a victim. God, to those, I ask, Father, for you to be upon them, to heal their heart and their mind and their imagination. Heal them, Jesus, those here that are here, maybe adults, no doubt, adults, maybe some even elderly now, yet bearing that horrible, horrible scar all their lives of having been abused and having been mistreated and it's affected all of their relationships it's, and it's affected how they see themselves and it's affected how they see you. And Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you would descend upon their hearts and set them free in this sanctuary and beyond to the thousands, to the hundreds of thousands that we know have been listening to these Wednesday night series to free them where they're at, whatever country they're in, whatever place they're at. That you'd remind them, Almighty God, that anyone who's in Christ Jesus is a brand new creation, that the old things have been passed away, all things have become new. Move, Holy Spirit, in these last days, in this last hour. Move in power to set people free, to bring them the, not only liberation from their life, but the joy of salvation. I pray tonight for young children, young teens, young adults. God, bring them a miracle. And Lord, I pray tonight, 
I guess I just have to limit it to this church. I'll just do that, Jesus. I'll get a, I'll, uh, Lord, for those who attend this church, to those who I know who say that and express the desire, our, our extended church family that's beyond these walls, I ask you now that you bring healing to those that need healing. And I pray right now in Jesus' name, God, you know exactly what's in my mind right now. I see that little guy from Sunday I'm asking you Father that if those people who are perpetrating this evil upon these children do not get saved in the next few hours then I pray that you would take their breath away if they're not going to get saved if they're not going to stop abusing these babies and these kids and these teens oh sovereign God if they're not going to get saved Take them. Remove them from this world. That's my prayer. I would not dare ask anyone to agree with me on that prayer. Lord, if I'm wrong, you'll correct me. You'll, you'll, you'll fix that. But Lord, please rescue these children. Powerfully. And God, everyone here tonight, I pray that there'd be a... a blanket of grace upon their life from this moment on that they've never known before. Hey, thanks for watching Real Life YouTube channel. And if this message has been a blessing to you, then just click the subscribe button because we'd love to keep you up to date on what we're teaching on and what's coming next. And if you'd like to help us increase our reach in getting out these messages to a greater audience, then you can help support us by becoming a partner by simply clicking on the link in the description box below. So listen, we wanna thank you for helping us get the word of God out to the ends of the earth.